Hey, good morning and welcome today. When Johannine's group sought out the Lord's will, were they really sincere? We're reading today from Jeremiah chapter 42, verses 18 to 22. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as my anger and my fury have been poured out on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so will my fury be poured out on you when you enter Egypt. And you shall be an oath, an astonishment, a curse, and a reproach, and you shall see this place no more. The Lord has said concerning you, O remnant of Judah, do not go to Egypt. Know certainly that I have admonished you this day. For you were hypocrites in your hearts when you sent me to the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us to the Lord our God, and according to all that the Lord our God says, so declare to us and we will do it. And I have this day declared it to you, but you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God or anything which he has sent you by me. Now therefore, know certainly that you shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence in the place where you desire to go to dwell. So it's very clear here from what the prophet utters, they were not sincere, they were hypocritical. So why did they inquire then? I mean, like, why even create this problem out of nothing? You're going to put yourself forth as, as wanting to know God's will. You're just creating a potential thing for God to be unhappy with you. You're creating a potential moral transgression on your own part out of nothing. Didn't have to do it quite that way. Now, some of the people might have been insincere from the beginning. Sure, of course. But there might also have been some among them, some in their midst that said, hey, let's go and see what God wants. Let's, let's try to find out. Let's inquire from the prophet Jeremiah and see what God wants us to do now. Maybe they were completely uh, sincere hearted people. Some of them, may, maybe. Maybe the broader group went along with them because they thought, well, Either the prophet's going to come back and say, sure, go ahead and go down to Egypt, or he's going to say, don't go. And in that case, we'll just denounce him as a false prophet. Like all the other false prophets, we've all lived here in, in the kingdom of Judah. We're all familiar with many false prophets. So they were just going to take Jeremiah and pluck him up and drop him in as a, in the group into the group of the false prophets with all the others, if he didn't say the things they wanted to hear him say. We don't really know. We really can't read minds, but... They do come, and they're all there, the people from the least to the greatest, and they want to know what God's plan for them is. So that's what they say. And then they say, we're going to do it. So now the word comes back from God. This is the word back. And by the way, you're a bunch of insincere hypocrites. Jeremiah, I guess, can't be accused of smoothing out this message. And again, why are they going to Jeremiah? Well, part of their intention may have been to deceive some of the people in their own group. Well, of course we're sincere. Of course we want to know what the prophet says. Of course. Well, let's go to him now. Maybe their goal was to present themselves as leaders you should follow. We're so sincere. We're so pious. We're inquiring of Jeremiah. Let's all go there and do it together. Maybe that was in their mind. Anyway, we can't read their mind or heart, but in the response of the prophet, their mind and heart is read. You were hypocrites in your heart. That's a word from God himself through his servant, Jeremiah. I like Jeremiah. He tells them the true state of their hearts. He holds nothing back. True, this is probably going to work out badly for Jeremiah. But hey, Jeremiah has already been through the ringer for serving God faithfully. And so nothing new is going to be dished out to him that he, he wouldn't expect. So he's faithful and he trusts in the Lord his God. Good for him. Good for him. I wonder if we know the lesson as well as Jeremiah does. And you know what? By declaring the truth out loud and to their face, maybe some, maybe some, might still be moved to repentance and to turn to the true and living God. After all, he rightly analyzed what was in our hearts when we came with this, with this request that we're not even going to keep. Let's pause and pray together. Dear Father in heaven, what is in our hearts? What is in my heart? I'm sure there are problems there. Lord, we pray that you will help us individually, each one. May hypocrisy be rooted out of our hearts so that we are not hypocrites in our hearts like these people were in the time of Jeremiah. Help us to be true to you, and then you can do for, it, for us things that you could never do for us if we harbor hypocrisy in our hearts. Be our leader, be our guide, be our helper, be our judge. Show us the depravity of our hearts so that we can turn back to you fully. Bless us we and help us, Lord, we pray. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. So, Johanan's group was not sincere when they asked, but they acted the part. May he be with you in all that you do this day.